Welcome to the Mosomic Mems Microphone Guide. In this episode we continue going through my list of key value indicators for Mems microphones. In this one we'll talk about frequency response, phase, phase response and group delay. Frequency response gives us the sensitivity of a microphone at all frequencies of interest. Phase tells us the delay in degrees that the signal experiences when it passes through a microphone. Phase response gives us the phase delay at all frequencies of interest. Group delay is the transit time of a signal through a microphone system versus frequency. The shape of the frequency response, particularly any resonance peaks in it, have a significant effect on the phase characteristics of a microphone or a microphone system, so these parameters fit well into this one episode. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. Hi, I'm Mikko Suvanto from Mosomic. Frequency response is the sensitivity of a microphone across a frequency range. The range is typically the audio frequency range, from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Frequency response is usually plotted relative to the sensitivity at 1 kHz. The response is often given as a measurement graph, like we see in the example here on the left, or as a window something like the one on the right here. The window sets the limits within which the response must lie. Sometimes the flat part of the response is specified by giving a frequency range, for example 100 Hz to 10 kHz, and giving a sensitivity tolerance for the sensitivity within that range, for example plus minus 3 decibels. This means that the variations in sensitivity within that range are no more than plus or minus 3 decibels. It should be noted that the plus minus 3 decibel variation allows for a 6 decibel difference between sensitivities at different frequencies. This is not an insignificant amount of variation. A frequency response specification that only includes a range of frequencies, for example from 100 Hz to 12 kHz, doesn't really specify anything if a frequency tolerance is not given. The goal for a MEMS microphone is typically to have a flat frequency response across the used frequency band. This means that the sensitivity of the microphone is the same at all frequencies within that band. A non-flat frequency response is considered to be a form of distortion called frequency response distortion. Frequency response distortion changes the relative amplitudes of different frequencies present in the sound signal. A wide and flat frequency response has many benefits, especially in devices which are used for many purposes, like most devices are. A flat response makes the capturing system versatile. Generally, audio sounds good if none of the frequencies it contains are emphasized or attenuated. A peak or significant rise in the response may be disturbing, especially if the signal is played back at a high volume. The effect depends on the contents of the sound and the location of the peak on the frequency spectrum. For example, listening to music at high volumes on a low quality car stereo system can be uncomfortable, because the system emphasizes some frequencies, maybe at low mid frequencies, at a few hundred hertz, and these frequencies sound at a very high volume, even if the overall volume level is not very high. Algorithms are likely to perform better if the signal levels they receive are proportional to the original signal at all frequencies. In other words, not boosted or attenuated due to peaks or valleys in the frequency response. Avoiding resonances at or near the frequency band used for applications helps avoid signal quality degrading peaks in the frequency response. The shape of the frequency response also correlates with the phase response of the microphone. The phase behavior deteriorates near the resonance peaks in the frequency response. We'll talk more about phase in a minute. Also, in more scientific applications, for example audio testing done in a laboratory, a flat response is desirable. The acoustical implementation of the microphone into a device plays a big role in how the frequency response of the system looks like. The acoustical porting that is typically needed from the surface of the device housing to the microphone sound sensor, is likely to make it difficult to achieve a flat frequency response 
for a very wide frequency range. Like we discussed in episode 2, the sound channels and the cavities in the channels can easily cause Helmholtz resonances that cause the frequency response first to rise and then plummet at higher frequencies. The resonances often take effect already below 10 kHz if the acoustical designs of the microphone and or the porting in the device mechanics are compromised. Any acoustic materials, such as dust protection meshes, in the sound channel also affect the frequency response. Acoustic materials may be used to improve the frequency response, because they can dampen resonances in the response. In other words, they may make the resonance peak lower. A poorly designed or executed mechanical design of the acoustic channel in the device may cause acoustic leaks that affect especially low sound frequencies. We'll talk more about microphone protection and acoustic sealing in other episodes about MEMS microphone acoustical and mechanical implementation. It's typically beneficial to match the frequency responses of the microphones used in a multi-microphone system. This helps you avoid sensitivity mismatch at any frequency. In a mass-produced device, the microphones in the same device unit may come from different manufacturers whose components are never identical, even if the specifications are the same. Especially in multi-microphone algorithm systems, the system performance may suffer if the frequency responses of the microphones vary from microphone to microphone and from device to device. A modern device can include a microphone array with four or more microphones. The sound channels for all the microphones in the device should be acoustically as identical as possible. Otherwise, the frequency responses will be different even for very similar microphones. Unfortunately, due to device design restrictions, making the sound ports identical is often practically impossible. Compromised frequency responses can be improved electrically by doing filtering or equalization. However, it should be noted that uh, this can affect the phase behavior of the signals uh, in a bad way that can affect the system performance. I'll talk more about how the device and the implementation of the microphone into a device affects the characteristics and performance of the microphones. I'll do this in episodes where I talk about the electrical, acoustical and mechanical implementation of, of microphones into devices. Ultrasonic frequencies lie above the 20 kHz mark on the frequency spectrum. Ultrasound is above the human hearing range. Some applications take advantage of these inaudible high frequencies. They can be used for, for example, echolocation or transmitting inaudible messages. The ultrasonic frequencies used in consumer electronics applications typically go up to about 40 kHz, or a little bit above that. Achieving a flat frequency response up to 40 kHz in a device where the microphone is located behind a sound port and a sound channel is very difficult, if not impossible, because of acoustic resonances. The goal is usually to achieve a good enough response at the frequency band that the application uses, for example, around 40 kHz. The acoustic porting in the device should be specifically designed to work with the acoustic properties of the microphone to achieve the best possible results. Also, measuring frequency responses up to tens of kilohertz can be tricky, and it may require special equipment and methods. It's typically a lot trickier than measuring frequency responses below 20 kilohertz. Okay, that's it for frequency response. Next we'll talk about phase. The phase performance of a microphone affects the quality of the signal that passes through the microphone. A microphone is a transducer that converts acoustic sound waves into an electrical signal. A signal that passes through such a transducer can experience a frequency-dependent timing shift. This shift between the input and the output of the microphone or the microphone system is called phase delay, and it's not measured as time in seconds, it's measured in degrees or radians. The acoustical properties of the microphone, and also the acoustical implementation of the microphone into a device, affect the phase delay throughout the frequency band. The role of phase is becoming more and more important, especially in high-performance microphone array systems, where algorithms process and analyze the outputs of multiple microphones. Let's have a look at a couple of examples that help us understand phase. In the illustration here, we see an input sound wave, a sign signal, received by a microphone sensor. 
Here you can see also the resulting electrical output signal. As you can see, the electrical output is delayed as compared to the incoming sound wave. The phase difference is in this case one fourth of the complete cycle of the sine wave. This means that the phase delay is 90 degrees. Here you see another set of incoming sound wave and the resulting output signal. We can see that the time delay for a 90 degree phase shift is longer than for the first example signal, the frequency of which is twice as high. The same phase shift, 90 degrees, causes a different time delay for signals that have different frequencies. In other words, phase delay is not a fixed time delay. Therefore, it's significantly different from signal latency, that's a fixed time delay, independent of signal frequency. Phase response shows the phase delay, phase shift in degrees, as a function of frequency. A flat phase response means that the phase shift is the same amount of degrees for all frequencies. It's important to know the phase response of a microphone, because most real-life signals contain multiple frequencies. As we just discussed, two frequencies that have the same phase shift have different time delays. Therefore, a flat phase response does not result in a constant latency time. If the different frequency components of the audio signal are delayed by different amounts of time, the phase relationships in the signal, and thereby the shape of the signal, change when it passes through the microphone. This is called phase distortion. Phase distortion means that the signal gets distorted and its accuracy, fidelity to the original sound, degrades. In an extreme case, where the phase delay angle is big, different time delays for different frequency components of a signal can completely change the shape of the signal. The change can significantly reduce the quality of the signal, affecting, for example, the performances of multi-microphone algorithm systems, as well as perceived sound quality. To avoid phase distortion caused by different frequencies in the sound signal being delayed by different amounts of time, the goal for the microphone system is either a zero degree phase delay at all frequencies, or a linear phase response. Both of these options preserve the original frequency content of the signal. In a linear phase system, the signal shift is linearly proportional to the frequency. In other words, the phase delay is different for each frequency. With a linear phase system, the phase relationship in the resulting output signal is not changed from the original input signal. The whole signal is just time-shifted. However, even if the phase shifts through the microphones in a multi-microphone system are linear, there may still be phase-related challenges in the system. Problems can arise if the signal time shifts, latencies, are not the same for all microphones. This can happen, for example, if multiple different microphone models are used in the same device system. Let's have a look at another example to, hopefully, make things a little bit clearer. The illustration here shows a sign signal, and another sign signal, the frequency of which is double the frequency of the first signal. We also see the sum signal form that results when the two signals are added together. Here are those same signals, both with a 90 degree phase shift. The resulting sum signal shape is completely different from the original sum signal, because the delay times for the two added signals are not the same. Here are the same signals, now with a linear phase shift. The frequency of the second signal is double the frequency of the first signal, so the phase shift of the second signal is now also double, 180 degrees. The linear phase shift results in a signal that has the same shape, and therefore it sounds exactly the same as the original one, but it's delayed as compared to the original sum signal. In this example, we have only two different frequencies added to each other. The more frequencies are summed to the sum signal, the more complicated the signal shape changes caused by the phase distortion will be. It's apparent that a linear phase shift, or no phase shift at all if possible, is important for keeping the original signal intact. Group delay is the transit time of a signal through a microphone system versus frequency. In other words, now this may be a bit difficult to swallow. Group delay 
is the delay of the amplitude envelopes of the various sinusoidal components in the signal from the original sound input to the microphone output signal. Group delay is the derivative rate of change in respect to time of the phase response. Group delay is a fixed time delay. It's measured in seconds. To avoid phase distortion, the group delay should be flat. A linear phase response results in a flat group delay. This means that the latency is the same for all frequencies. Thereby, a linear phase response is better than a flat phase response. The phase performances of microphones can affect the performances of multi-microphone signal processing systems significantly. Phase distortion changes the contents of the signals coming to the algorithms. This can disturb the operation of multi-microphone algorithm systems. For example, noise cancellation systems can be based on comparing very subtle signal level and phase differences in the signals coming from the two or more microphones. Phase distortion can impede the comparison processes. There are some microphone array cases that should be highlighted. Timing is important for active noise cancellation systems. Signals don't cancel each other as intended if their phases don't match. Beamforming and beam steering accuracy can suffer from inaccurate phase information. The direction of the beam is not accurate if the signal phases are not accurate. Phase problems can also cause source localization to be inaccurate in systems that base their noise cancellation on knowing where the wanted sound source is. Also poor phase performance matching from microphone to microphone may confuse algorithms. Good matching is an important enabler for high multi-microphone algorithm system performance. DSP algorithms, such as noise cancellation systems, can get confused if the phase information coming from the microphones varies from microphone to microphone or from device to device. Phase mismatch may cause the outputs of the two or more microphones to not represent the real phase difference between the signals that the microphones receive. This can confuse the signal analysis processes. The phase matching of microphones should be specified by the microphone manufacturer or the buyer to make sure the matching is on a good enough level. Matching should also be taken into account when a device manufacturer buys microphones for his or her device from multiple microphone suppliers. Phase matching from one microphone to another is often specified as plus minus x degrees at 1 kilohertz. Okay, that's it for this episode. In this one we talked about frequency response, phase, phase response and group delay. In the next episode we'll continue go going through my list of uh, key value indicators for MEMS microphones. In that one we'll talk about noise and signal to noise ratio. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any comments or questions, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you like what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels, and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management, and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 